Hello there, Sir from Seventeen once again, bringing you Mission Five of my Brink Hard Difficulty video walkthrough, and this is the fifth mission of the Security Campaign, and it's entitled Early Launch. And right now, this mission is pretty difficult because what's got to what we've got to do here is we've got to guard the the crane controls and defend the side barricade. And it's a defense mission, so by default, it's generally easier than when you're attacking. So it isn't too challenging in that regard. Where it becomes difficult is the fact that you have to defend for a large amount of time. And this mission specifically, they can come from a whole bunch of different areas. The, the one luxury you do have is they have a, a, a lot of different spawn points, and their spawn points are much further away than yours. So that is always going to be the advantage you. On the flip side, when you get here with resistance, this mission is incredibly difficult. It's a lot more challenging than this little foray here. So just be aware that you, when you play as the resistance and you're doing the attacking, uh, the difficulty definitely steps up. But that doesn't mean that this is a walkover because these bots, this game, these mechanics, it all adds up to the same thing and that is one big broken pile of bullshit. So get ready to be frustrated, get ready to be cheaply killed cheaply you know raped for a lot of it and just pray that you've got friends patient enough to help you get through it and if you haven't do the smart thing and play this game on versus mode which is probably significantly easier because people aren't as good as perfect aim bots it's that simple but right now the crane controls are on that platform just ahead of me where I was looking before that guy came over and cock slapped me and the best thing to do is to plan to mine on either side of the entrances that lead onto it because the thing with the mines is they're a fantastic tool, but the AI has to step off them. So if you lay them too close to an objective that has to be hacked, for instance, they'll step on the mine and they'll not move. So it won't kill them and they'll still hack the controls or repair whatever it is you're defending. So it's always best to offset it ever so slightly so to get to where the objective is, they have to step off the mine, potentially fucking them and their friends. And that's the best thing you can do with the mines and... With that knowledge, you should hopefully be, you know, laying better, better place mines. And also, around the area, what they have to hack, you want to, if you can, get as many turrets up as possible. This is the enemy spawn, don't run this way. This level's confusing as fuck, so that's the reason for it. But get, spot, get, your, get your mines down, get some turrets up, and then once you've got the, the area they have to hack pretty much defended, and you've got somebody sitting back there, I would move over to the barricade on the balcony, and uh, use the high ground to keep them out that way. I'm not too sure if you're going to see me doing it because, uh, truth be told, this level is a bit of a clusterfuck. I really could not find my way back from the spawn to where I wanted to be, so a lot of it is me running around, bumping into AI and getting dicked. There's one there. He has a massive advantage on me at that range because his gun is fantastic and my gun is the Black Ops equivalent to the fucking Uzi. But this is the, the balcony you want to try and defend if you can, because they're all going to be pushing to my left there, and if you can stay up here, you can generally get some nice kills. The, there is a better spot, though. That's not the balcony I meant. I do apologize. Like I said, this level's confusing. It all looks dogger brown, and it's just... oh, I don't like this level at all. This is probably the worst level on the game for me to play. Not because it's hard or anything, just because I just... I yawn when I see it, because it's just... It's just a reminder of what this game could have been, could have been, sorry, and what the game isn't, and that's any fucking good. But right now, we're supposed to be guarding the crane controls, and somebody's 99% through it, so we fucked up the start push. We fucked up defending it, and um, that means that we're going to have to play a little bit longer on this level. So if you can fully defend that push, you should be okay. But we didn't apparently, so. Do apologize about that, but it's on hard, the bots are bastards, and it's one of those games. It's like playing with your feet, sometimes it's futile. But buff you guys, keep moving forward. Watch, be careful here, this is kind of the central area, this is the dividing line. You'll generally have most of your gunfights on that section there. And uh, that window is fucking pointless, I always look through it and I don't even know why I do. I saw a dude to my right just then, there's this guy here. And then this is the, the main area. This is the, the main controls. 
the, the controls we have to guard. And unfortunately, this is another area where they come from some ridiculous avenues to try and mess you up. But there is a good position to defend that I find towards the end of this video, which will only work if you can get them spawning on the opposite side of you. If they come where they're coming from now, you're going to get killed. So, once again, it's in the hand of Lady Luck. You can't really control it all that well, but it's a good spot when they're on their opposite spawn. But there's, there's three of them, just two of them just ran in, one of them just spawned, they're cleaning up my guys on this door. Wow, I did not realise he was a bad guy. Fuck me, look at that, that is, <laughs> that is Brink 101. That's a lesson, it's a life lesson in playing Brink, don't play it, and if you do play it, d you know, bleach your memory of it, because it's garbage. But, one of my buddies is over here near the objective, there's a mine down. Fingers crossed we should have this shit defended. The only problem is, it's going to take us, you know, another 10 minutes to, to guarantee that. So just push back as quick as you can. Be careful not to run into the enemy spawn, because, like I said, this map is a fucking maze. And here I go, running around like a trooper. My buddy just got headshotted. Something that happens far too often on this game. And it's so strange, because the hit detection on their headshots seems so random. You can be firing at a guy's torso and you'll get a headshot and you'll not even feel like you've achieved it. But, I mean, look at how many bullets that guy just took. He's probably going to kill me now, after all that. Oh, no, he didn't. Oh, he's got friends. So, oh, it's just, it's just, goodness me. If that happened in any other game, you would fucking, you would write an angry email to the developer. It's like, if, if David Vanderhaar's Twitter had anything to do with this game... It would get tenfold the amount that it gets for Black Ops if Brink was the equivalent of Call of Duty. I know this is a highly, you know, metaphorical world where everything is in reverse, but even so, David Vanderhaar would have no hair on his face because of stress. He would have lost his moustache through stress. But once you get over here, the balconies can be a good place to defend. The only problem is... Height advantages don't really serve you that well when you're up against enemies that don't have to aim. Enemies that, you know, just think death and you die. Just like, is it Screamers, and Michael Ironside, and people's heads that pop. It's either that or Scanners. I think it could be Scanners. I always forget the fucking name. I always get it mixed up with the the other film with Robocop guy, who I always forget the name of. But, just keep respawning, keep getting back into the action as fast as you can and just hope that they don't get a big enough foothold in where the objective is because if they do it can be very difficult to get them out but because this is once again another effort in fertility of me running forward getting raped, running forward getting raped, eventually doing the objective because this game is broken I'm going to talk about something else to preserve my sanity from reliving this stressful experience because there's going to be more people with post-traumatic stress disorder from playing Brink than there probably was in any war. And uh, if you're a veteran, I do apologize. That's probably the most demonetizing thing you've ever heard, and I'm the most ignorant, naive asshole on the planet. But it's a fucking joke. Let it go. So, in the background, I have a film called She's Out of My League on, a film I've watched a few times before, and it's a film I can honestly say I really enjoy. It's a comedy starring a guy called Jay Baruchel, who is um, a pretty skinny, scrawny dude. He's typecast at this moment in time, Michael J. Fox style, where he always plays the skinny, scrawny dude in, you know, the unconventional comedies, rom-coms generally. Uh, you might remember him from, uh, I think it was Knocked Up, where he played the dude that got pink eye and uh, had the, the really gormless looking Asian bird. And uh, he's been in other films. He was in Fanboys. He was the one of the main guys, the guys that was dating the girl over the internet and the girl turned out to be like five years old. If you've seen Fanboys, that's a really good film. It's about a bunch of guys that go and try and steal the work print of Phantom Menace because they're obsessed with Star Wars. And if you're anything like me and you'll, you'll watch anything and you like those kind of stuff, you'll enjoy it. But this is a, a pretty typical kind of romantic comedy with a nerd that meets a super hot girl and, you know, against all odds they get together and it's... It's pretty interesting, uh, the, the way the story goes, but it's, it's some of the fucking gags, man, it's just, it, it's really well put together with some ridiculous references that come out of nowhere. Like, the, the main character's got this stocky little friend who's, you know, he's all rainbows and gumdrops, and 
and super pleasant and every single thing that happens he uses a Disney reference to to kind of like mirror it and he keeps going on about Aladdin and, and Princess Jasmine and stuff and it's just hilarious I really enjoyed it so I would definitely guarantee you checking it out if you've not seen it it's a funny film it's uh, it's not going to change your life it's predictable as fuck but that's what these films are we watch them to you know suddenly laugh because something ridiculous has happened but yeah in the game I'm still getting slapped by everything I'm getting a little bit of lag uh, one thing you're going to notice especially on the resistance campaign uh, we changed host from the, the TRW Aiden guy and Sling 23 got it and Sling uh, he lives in a completely different part of my country, and uh, for whatever reason, my connection to him is fucking garbage. So, you're going to see me Michael Jackson in my way around occasionally, and it's nothing to do with the game, that's purely my shitty internet connection, so blame Sky. If you don't know who Sky are, blame them anyway. But just keep, you know, fighting the good fight, winning the war of attrition, doing as best as you can, and uh, I'm going to talk about something else. I'm going to talk about 24. And, uh, I'm hoping everybody at this moment in time knows what 24 is, for better or for worse, because I, I, I generally see, when I think about it, these two different separate sides of a crowd. There's the one crowd that really like 24, they really like the drama, the tension, you know, the constant conflict, uh, the constant sh shouting and gruff voice by Kiefer Sutherland, and, you know, how unlucky can this one guy be to have so many bad days filled with bombs, biological weapons, terrorists, and family members that turn out to be absolute cocks? Then there's the other side of the margin of the people that don't really like it, don't really like Keith Sutherland, and think it's just you know overly drama dramatized, a show that is in essence you know painting by numbers ever since the first series of just conflict for the case of conflict. And uh, I am the the former. Because I love 24. Uh, I didn't watch it when it first aired. Uh, to give you some kind of timeline on when I did watch it, I got into it when the seventh season was on Sky. I was on my TV service. And uh, I pretty much watched every season in a row in the space of maybe a week and a half because I was binging. I was playing games, you know, shit easy games that I didn't have to focus on and watching 24. And I was literally getting up watching 24, playing shit and easy games at the same time, and just having massive stints of it, and enjoying every moment of it, because it was just one of those times where you just want to be by yourself, and you've got a good TV program to facilitate that. And that's what 24 was for me. And I love Kiefer Sutherland, so that's an extra bonus on top. And not only does 24 have some of, you know, the, the most, I wouldn't say original, but it keeps you going when it comes to the plot twists. It seems to throw curveballs at you that other series don't really have the balls to do. Stuff that's, you know, at the time was probably quite edgy, especially when you bear in mind that it started in like 2000, 2001, and it's a show predominantly about terrorists, and America had just had, you know, it was just had an in remembrance of one of the worst terrorist attacks on American soil. So it was pretty brave at the time, and it also had a black president in a handful of its seasons, which was before Obama was in office, and it, it did a lot of cool and good stuff, and it's consistently good at keeping you going through the series, and keeping you interested in the characters, and mixing it up in different and unique ways. And I'm not going to say too much for anybody that hasn't seen it, because it's one of those shows that, because the twists take so long to develop, when they finally happen, they're all the more impactful. But the only problem with it is, if you ruin it, there's going to be seven episodes of building up this red herring, only for the red herring to be proven false and the real culprit to show his head. And it just makes it, you know, pointless to watch when you know what's going to happen, unless you're a fan like me, who generally watches it every year. But, that's enough about 24, it's a great show, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, check it out, you will not be disappointed. That is the end of the early launch, if you manage to defend, if you didn't, it's unsuccessful, you'll have to play that shit again. I pray that you don't, because... Playing Brink through once is enough, let alone twice. I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. I would gladly take bamboo, you know, under the fingernails, rather than play this shit again. But thanks for watching. I hope it helped, guys, and you take care now.